detailed study about the load pattern okay and what type of load to be served by battery energy systems okay okay now what is mean by load load is any kind of electrical equipment or uh, or mechanical equipment which will run upon the electricity right right so in that there is a major three classifications one is resistive second capacitive and third one is inductive load right yes and uh, in practice normally ac is uh, more populated than dc why ac is more populated than dc dc current or dc uh, equipments if you observe uh, let's say uh, example of city right why we are not transferring the dc current from uh, one point to another point why ac pada sa hai btech mein electrical mein bata bhul gaye hain so only one AC, AC. And major important thing yes uh, when you are transferring the sorry no yeah, please go so durga joined or not it no 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 he has not joined okay 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 so there is some noise from your end okay uh the main reason is if you are wanted to transfer from position 1 to position 2 or a to b the major cause is your power power loss right your voice has okay right hello hello now your it's fine hello yes now it's fine okay so uh, i'm saying about the why ac is more populated than the dc okay hmm. so there are two aspects very first one is your economy and second is efficiency okay so efficiency will populate uh, with respect to the technological aspects like when you are transferring a load or a current from a to b right hmm. so there is a power loss between the cable and if you are using the dc power so there will be huge loss because you cannot push the voltage level as high as you required but in ac you can shoot it up to uh, 11 kv 22 kv 33 kv right right and yes. once you voltage is rise your ampere goes down and ampere goes down it will help you to reduce the loss so that will help you in the, in the form of efficiency enhancements right the transmission efficiencies and based on economy uh, again the similar point when you are using the dc appliances there will be a huge cost if you look at the ac appliances especially okay. their magnets come into the picture to operate it right yes yes so if you look at overview only one reason you can understand its economy and efficiency because of that we use ac more rather than the dc right yes and whenever you required a dc appliance to be uh, powered with your ac supply you either the device is inbuilt having a converter system or you need to put uh, a converter or inverter uh, uh, i would say uh, which will be converting your ac uh, power to dc power as per the application yes now the point is when we have more populated part of ac so there is uh, performance of the power or let's say the purity of the power come into the picture so what the factor which is showing the purity which is power factor okay right as highest the power factor best quality of the power is there so now what is the power factor definition in theoretical you could say the formula that it's a true power upon apparent power or it's a, a kilowatt upon kva right okay so but what is it actually 
so it's actually the cosine of the angle between voltage and current what is the power power is a vi cos phi correct if you look at the single phase Yes. So, what is the power factor? It's an angle, it's a difference or angle between your current and voltage. So, it's a cos angle basically. That's why cosine of the angle between voltage and current, this theta, this phi. Okay. 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 In AC circuit, a current and voltage are in a phase. Within a phase, there is a current and voltage, right? The flowing yes. in the sinusoidal form. Yes. That's why we can able to estimate this phi. And in DC, it is a direct, so there is a no phi between your voltage and current. It's a straight line. Mm. Correct. So that's why DC supply doesn't have a power factor. Okay. Right. If you look at this. I think you were aware about this. This is a power uh, factor triangle, right? Yes, yes. There, there are also a similar triangle, which is power triangle. I'll show it to you. So this is a power triangle. At the bottom, this is your real power. This is the reactive power and this is apparent power, right? The government will going to bill you according to this act actual uses what you did at your appliances is the real power or true power with this and this is the resistance and then uh, losses within the system mm. so theta is as less the cost value will again towards unity or theta will be as uh, max the reactive power will be more more. Is it right? Yes. Right. So once your cos phi figure is towards one or unity, mm. right? Then your power is very much pure. Or there is a very less loss within the power. Yes, yes. Right. So if you look at these three tri triangles, so this is the power factor triangle, this is power triangle, and this is about to impedance triangle. So power factor, it's a cos phi you can estimate, right? Uh, if you look at the figure P, which is power triangle, uh, this value because as we have this is apparent power vi so the uh, amplitude or yeah amplitude for this is it's a vi cos phi right yes so as a cos phi equal to hypotenuse upon yeah adjacent upon hypotenuse adjacent upon hypotenuse right cos yes. theta equal so adjacent upon hypotenuse. So hypotenuse into your cos phi, uh, definitely this figures come out, so, right? Right. And if you look at the uh, impedance triangle, your impedance is nothing but the average out of your, or root mean square of your resistance reactance part, correct? Mm -hmm. And these three are based on the uh, load types vary with it because resistance is for resistive load, right? Mm. Capacitance for uh, capacitive load and mm. inductance for inductive load, right? Yes. And impedance is all together, root mean square of all together. Yes. So your power factor is very essential when you are treating towards your or uh, having a judgment for the power uh, purity, okay? And because of the various load types, the power factor varies with respect to the load types. Okay. Now, if you look at the observations for lagging power factor, what it affects for leading power factor and for the unity power factor, how the picture will presentation and what is the exact graph it shows. 
So very first lagging power factor, when you are looking at the lagging power factor, what it means actually? Current lead voltage lag. Actually, no. when it's a lagging power factor, current lag karega and voltage okay. lead karega. Okay. जहाँ पे करंट लीड करता है दैट इज अ लीडिंग पावर ओके ओके एंड ये कहां पे होता है मोस्टली कैपेसिटिव सर्किट ओके ठीक है व्हेन देयर इज अ इंडक्टिव सर्किट डेफिनेटली देयर इज अ लैगिंग पावर फैक्टर इट मींस वोल्टेज इज गोइंग टू लीड राइट ओके आई विल गिव द एग्जांपल लाइक अ फैन सीलिंग फैंस दैट इज अ इफ यू observe that there is a motors right inside of ceiling fan so mm -hmm. motor is having inductions right so that is a, a truly inductive load to manage the power factor we are putting a white a cylinder there that is a capacitor right capacitor, yes so why we are choosing that to maintain the power factor for particular device okay correct so that is an inductive load basically but and uh, because of inductive load it's a lagging power factor and to maintain the power factor what we are doing additionally we are trying to put a capacitance or capacitor right yes and in the leading power factor you have uh, let's say it's a yes. capacitive circuit itself right yes. synchronous condensers you can use uh wherever there is a bank uh, of your capacitors then mm. you can smoothly work up okay right and when you are looking at the unity power factor part if you look at the pictures so unity is this point your current is also starting and from this point your voltage is also starting and these two are merging on a same line okay the angle between current and voltage is again zero here and this scenario in the ac is very ideal A very rare chance will it happens yes okay very rare chance and uh, make sure have a note of it power factor never more than unity okay Yes. yes. Practically, it should be close to unity, but not more than one. It's always zero point nine nine something. Okay. This part, the industry discounts. The distribution companies are saying that you should maintain your power factor more than zero point nine five. Okay. Okay. They are asking to maintain the same. And. Whenever you are going for the new connection, they are taking your single line diagrams to observe that. And with respect to their uh, instruction, you need to manipulate and the design, and you need to set up the design as per their rules and what strategy they made for. Yes. Correct. Yes. So that's why whenever we are putting a new power plant in the field. Uh, we are taking the statutory approvals from the discoms, right? Yes, yes. In the discom, what we are doing, we are sharing our SLDs with them. So they yeah. will verify at their end, and if that works with respect to their clauses, they will approve. If it doesn't, they will ask to redesign it or having some uh, additional part of the system, right? Yes. So that is their yes, right. It's been power factor mainly right or mostly they are focusing on the power factor and then earthing part okay they don't want to hamper their system because of your power plant yes yes right because they are serving to the uh, everyone i would say because yes. of one entity they don't want to suffer everybody hmm. so on the on the their point of view they are looking for your safety of the plant you yeah. don't hamper their system because of your power plant right and second part if you are using their power what would be the power factor for them yes 
so these are the very two core important part they are looking at if you if your system is fulfill their requirement definitely they will allow you to put the plant okay okay yes no so these are the basically based upon inductive capacitive and uh, resistive circuits and uh, if i look at the open eye or naked eye observations you cannot observe uh, what is the resistive load what is the inductive load what is the capacitive load if you do not have any instrument on the field yeah. right yeah. but in uh, other way if you can observe it's a continuous load or intermittent load that you can do with the naked eyes Okay. Right. Like a fan is continuously running, let's say for twenty-four hours. Mm. That is case one, right? You can observe with naked eyes or open eyes, right? The and second scenario, the fan is working for one hour and uh, hold for two hours and again start for one hour. Mm. And within the twenty-four hour cycle, right? Mm. So. in these two scenario very first example is for continuous load second scenario is intermittent load with a cyclic pattern and if you look at their behavior when they are going to operate see uh, i'm giving the example of fan you can treat any any load electrical load okay how it works now what is the effect of it energy when electrical energy is uh, used to let's say uh, any electrical appliances it has a two things very first it serve the purpose and it will lose some amount of energy in the terms of heat yes right uh, i think it's faraday's law or thermodynamic law when uh, energy cannot be created nor destroyed it is not destroyed yes right only one form of energy is converted into another form so it's a conversion of forms but conversion is never happens 100% it will lose it will have a two to three uh, different type of conversion like mm. heat loss is there and the your purpose is also there right whatever it is rotating the machines or heating something right or let's say uh, what what else uh, powering to ac any anything but having a connection to any equipment there is a two thing one is what the purpose for the device is made for and second is heat loss and because yes. of the heat loss the temperature will arise yes and once it is power to particular system temperature loss i mean heat loss is there but the device is also having their own efficiencies correct and because of that you are losing your electrical power again okay hi now if you can observe these two diagram what what they reflect i'll explain then you can observe let's say this is the graph for load and time okay this is again the same x axis is showing your time and y axis is upon load so i started with this point from this right mm. this is my load let's say this point and i started my fan at a instant what it happens if you look at the load load for the fan means let's say 500 watt of fan size right so mm. my fan is just reaching to threshold and it will start continuous load correct yes if i click on this so it will let's say uh, triggering point is this so if i just on the button just a minute i'll let me my now you can see this so from this point if i just click the button it will shoot whatever the power required the peak power right for the fan to operate it it will shoot to from this point to this point 
and post that it's a continuous like for a day it's a 24 hour right and once oh. i off the button it will immediately go down correct yes. so this is for your continuous shoot up then your continuous process and then immediate shoot down right but yes. if you look at the loss behind it as your power is consumed by your device so again the shooting of the losses will remain same it follow the behavior of your load if the loss will be continuous loss will be continuous and again if you look at these things your load is more amplitude and your loss is lesser amplitude right because yes. of the efficiency parts come into the picture and that's why we are saying the devices are uh, best efficient devices are more better than uh, lower efficient devices mm -hmm. right yes and if you look at the third parameter how the temperature arise right from this point my load is shooted to the peak point but whether my temperature is shooted to the peak no it's just initiated and it's curvature path to follow it at this point yes because here is my peak load at the last moment my temperature is also again last moment for this and if you wanted to observe from this point onwards it will again go down slightly this way the curvature will remain similar kind of things will happen going to here like this yes right now comparatively if you look at the intermittent load uh, cycle what it happens load is again shooting zero to one constant load for some duration then zero right Yes. Again, uh, this is the halt for let's say two hours, and then it will start rising. It will constant, and it will shoot down. For electrical losses, similar. Whenever there is a continuous duty, it will continuous with the loss as well. Yes. But if you look at the temperature part, it will initiate with the curvature, with the slope. Right. It will not instant uh, raise in the temperature it will increase gra uh, gradually right with having a some slope and if you look at the no load conditions here there is a no load condition right so but at this from this point onwards your temperature is again going down but this is this is not a immediate again i cannot go this temperature is having their own rate to cool it right yes, yes. so because of that it took some time yeah, basically it's because a kind of uh, like in, in a layman a fan will work for 3 hours then it will get heat up and it will take approximately 15 to 20 minutes to uh, cool down okay. correct correct that is what and why why i am explaining because of the energy is going to lose because of your heat yes and it is not usable energy for you the purpose is fan needs to rotate and give us the cooled air or air right or create the turbulence in the air yes, yes right but the that was the purpose but this temperature loss are serving our purpose no it's no. diverting the purpose second yes. part this losses will they serve our purpose no they are again diverting the purpose and because of these two, these are the impacting on our losses. Okay. To the energy, right? And let's say if it is a billing point of view, you are billed for all three. Hmm. Yes. Correct. The loss will be billed to you, not billed by the uh, bill to energy producer. Yes. It will be built to user consumer. Right? Yeah. Understood this part? Yes, yes. Okay. So there will be a, a, a fruitful example where you can understand uh, how the grid connections or grid load and off grid load we can correlate. 
okay yes so, so there will uh, from my perspective a load cannot be uh, off grid or on grid it's a uh, physical connections the powering connection the powering uh, source right whether it is connected to grid means the discoms right then uh, the load is called a grid type load and when it is connected to your batteries or bat battery energy storage systems part then it is called a off grid load yes if you look at the definitions as well uh, on grid system is one in which the power system is connected to the utilities power grid and the load which is connected or charged or powered whatever you say with the grid supply of electricity called as on grid load right and if you look at the off grid off grid system is one in which the power system whatever power system means your load type whatever you power right uh -huh. is connected to your battery storage system yeah. and the load which is connected or charged or powered with the battery energy storage supply of electricity called as a off grid load yes here you can look at the pictorial point as the block block view of it it is power uh, supplied by grid then it is on grid it is supplied by batteries then it is off grid off grid but ultimately it's an electrical load hmm. it's the same for both the systems it's our predefined uh, terminology to evaluate a better fashion hmm. for that right Hmm. now there is an example which will be correlating these things and this will help you out to understand more clearly okay what is the problem statement municipal hospital operates uh, do you have calci with you not right now okay so uh whenever we are having the session please keep uh, three things with you uh, notebook pen and oh, pen i have i am noting down every topic okay. i'll uh, take care from the next time okay no worries no worries right now you can manage it out i'll explain uh, even a, a single presentation as well okay but this will help you out to understand more clearly once you go with the your uh, hands on calculation so it will help you to uh understand it as quick as possible okay so take an example of this a municipal hospital operates 24 hour in a city okay let's say in gurgaon itself hmm. hospital is having a two numbers of opd yes. and it required 5 kilowatt power supply constantly for each yeah. opd also it operates three numbers of general wards and consumes 4 kilowatt power each there are 20 numbers of doctors cabin powered with 2 kilowatt each cabin kindly find the total power and energy per day require requirement of the hospital this is the one question second also find find out the energy required for a month if it operates 25 days per month right also find the battery capacity the third point also find the battery capacity to operate the hospital with a partial load and must have one day backup plan yes. interesting if it operates 25 days per month okay also find the battery capacity okay now what would be the first step first is two numbers of opd that is of 5 kilowatt each right. then then opd is total load is 10 kilo then we have 12 kilowatt 4 into 3 that is for your general ward load what then doctors cabin 20 into 2 40 so total is 10 12 40 62 it's your load it's a load. power demand right okay. Yes. Now, what is the energy then? Energy is that 
What is the basic formula of energy? Power and energy. What is the relation? Is What is the formula for uh, power and uh, energy? So I like time or time or something. Ha, correct, correct. Energy is equal to power into time. Yes. Correct. P into T. P into T yes. P. So P into T. T for time. Time we have twenty five days. No, Not no. If you look at this. 24 so hours. this is the peak uh, load for every moment you calculate, mm. correct? Mm. So power is always instantaneous. Energy is your sum of particular duration. Mm. Correct. Power may vary. Let's say 60 to next moment it would be a 60. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, next to next moment it would be 50 post it to it would be again 62 it's a instantaneous but you calculate the energy for it let's say for a 15 minutes time duration it will be sum of all together okay with respect to time with respect to time right yes. so here also uh, we are doing the similar thing in a day very first sentence we marked municipal hospital operates 24 hour in a city. Yes. So this calculation is for a single day right now. You calculate for a one day and then multiply with the 25. Na? That mm. will work. So energy required for OPD. What is the power? Oh. It's a 10. And for how many hours it will going to work? 24. Right? Yes. Here, everything is calculated with respect to the peak power. Mostly the calculation will going to happen based on the rated power. Okay. As this is the hospital scenario and uh, the power, what we considered here is absolutely a rated power you can consider. Means it's a demand, rated demand from the hospital. OK. OK. Now, so I would say it's a uh, rather than having a uh, saying the total power, I would say rate, rated power for the OPD. Right. Then it's a 10 into 24 to 40. Yes, yes. So each day, if I look at OPD will consume 240 units. Yes, correct. Yes. So within 240 units, how many OPD we are uh, you uh, using or powering? Two OPDs. Yes. Right. Uh, two OPDs will consume 240 units each day. Now okay. energy required for general watts. We well, can calculate. 12, 12 into 24 means power into time. Again, okay. similar thing for doctor's cabin. Okay. Power okay. so 40 kilowatt, then 24 it's a 90, 960. Yes. Right now, sum of all together is a total energy required for the hospital. Right. Mm. So 240 plus 288 plus 960. Is a 1488 KWH so is, is my. Day. This is for hospital. One day is my and uh, yes, this is my energy requirement for one day to mm. run the hospital with this all facilities. Three numbers of general ward, two numbers of OPDs, 20 numbers of doctor cabin which will be operating for 24 hours continuously. Yes. So it's a continuous duty now, right? Mm. Now, the, this is the answer for your first question. What is the power and what is the energy required? Yes. Now, the question number two, if it operates, uh, uh, also find the energy required for a month. If it operates 25 days per month. Then into 25. Now it's my 1488. We'll multiply it by 25. Yes. Right? 
So it's a 37.200 kWh. Even I can write this in a megawatt hour as well. Yes, 37.20 megawatt hour. So for a month, it requires 37,200 units of energy to operate the hospital. Correct? It's your second question, Sansa. Now third question. Also find the battery capacity to operate the hospital with the partial load and must have one day backup plan. Okay. Correct. So now, every day energy requirement when it operates on full load, what is the energy requirement? 1488 for one day. 1488, right? Yes. For one day. When it operates on full load. We we have already calculated that part, right? Yes. Now it's a 1488. So daily energy requirement when it operates with the partial load. What happened when it operates on the partial load? Because in uh, last question, here they have mentioned partial load, right? Mm. find the battery capacity to operate the hospital with the partial load and must have one day backup plan. So if the partial load means the half load. Mm. So it means ultimately my consumption will going to half. Correct? Yes. Because uh, either you do the half load or half time. Right? It works. So 1488 into 0.5 equal to 744 units. Mm. Now, how to find out the battery capacity? Hence, the battery capacity for one day. Right? Equal to. Should I say it's my energy requirement is equal to battery capacity 744? Mm. Actually not because in a battery, let's say it's your demand. It's 744 is a hospital's requirement to operate it, right? Mm. Itna to milna hi mm. Right? It's oh, it's so requirement store. to fulfill. Say store bhi karna na, then multiply karna. Haan. 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 store for one day karna, hai, right? Ek din ka store bhi karna. Hai. But uh, before that, uh, I would have two questions. Uh, while charging and discharging, is there any energy loss within the battery? Take yes. an example of your mobile. Uh, yes, maybe. Yes, maybe, right? Not sure. Maybe there will be a loss. Uh, I would say it's definitely there is a loss okay. when you are charging the battery and uh discharging the battery why i'll i'll explain you uh when you are converting your electrical energy into electrochemical energy mm. battery is a combination of electrochemical things right it's yes. chemistry having cathode anode separator and electrolyte right yes. and it's mm. a conversion of uh, let's say one chemical form into another chemical form Mm. And when there is a phase transition, it's a phase transition, right? Mm. And when there is a phase transition, there is definitely heat up. Yes. And this is the loss. Heat if loss. you observe, when you mobile charging, it gets a little bit warm, right? Yes. Right. And when, again, second point, when you are using a YouTube and let's say, uh, any other thing or game uh, when you are playing the game, mobile heat ho jata hai. Mm. Right? Why? It's a discharging the energy with a high rate. Yes, yes. Right? So charging and discharging is again a losing the energy. So for mm. that, you need to take care of the safety point of view. So if you have to do what you have to do, if you have to meet the demand, you have to increase the battery size. You have to incur the loss. Right? You need to incur that loss. Okay. Correct? Yes. Second.
uh, when you are using the mobile, will you draw your energy from the battery up to zero or thus five percent the key up use karte? Can you repeat it? When when you are using the battery or mobile, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, at till what percentage you are uh, drawing out the power and post that you start the charging. Till what point? I can. I'm not understanding your question. So let's say you are operating your mobile, right? Mm -hmm. So how much? Uh, you can use it till the percentage of battery. At what percentage it would be? Up hundred percent draw out karte ho kya energy usse? Zero percent hone tak up leke bedte ho kya? No no. Nahi right? Hmm. Mostly will go up to ten percent. Abhi ten percent a red alert a gaya ya twenty percent a red alert a gaya. So hmm. we'll go to the charging point and just charge it right? Yes. Usko kya bolte? State of charge. Percentage ko? SOC. Right? Okay. So you never drain out the battery. Let's say it's a cushion basically. Mm -hmm. 20%, 10%, right? Buffer jisko aap bolte. Ya cushion bolte. You are maintaining that, right? You can never go below that. Mm. So when you are using the uh, when you are designing the high, higher specification of the battery, let's say mobile ka packet to chota hota. It's a MAH, not in AH also, right? It's yes, MH. Yes. 6 AH, let's say 6000 MH means 6 AH battery, right? Mm. 12 volt 6 AH battery. It's very uh, no, not a 12, it's a 3.6 volt. Mm. Right? 3.6 volt 6 AH battery. 6 AH is also very high because right now the mobiles come with the 6000 mAh capacities, right? Initially, it was only 3500 mAh. But here in the electrical infra, you are looking for kWh capacities of the battery. It's a 10 to the power 6 times more, more capacity. Mm. Right? So it's a huge comparative to the example of mobile. So you never go for towards zero. You will be hold somewhere, let's say 20 or 30. So if you are using the battery of lead acid, it's it has a requirement. You cannot draw less uh, below 30% of its capacity. Okay. Okay, for lead acid. Otherwise, it hampers to the performance later on. It hampers to the life of the battery. If you draw out the energy below 30 percent. Okay. In the lead acid, but in lithium ion, you can draw out up to 20 percent. Or in some cases, it would also work for 15 percent also. One five. Okay. Okay. It means Pattern. you are having. What is it? You are having. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Why the efficiency of lithium ion is more than the lead acid? That is not a, uh, efficiency. It's a, a chemical property of the material, and that would say the specific energy. Okay. Right. Battery specific energy. Uh, the terminology what we use in the industry is battery specification uh, specific energy of the battery. Okay. Okay. So lithium ion is having higher specific energy uh, comparative to yes. your lead acid. Okay. That is their chemical properties basically. That's why uh, in automobile right now EV is boosting. Why? Yes, lithium ion is there. Lithium ion is boost. Why? Because of its uh, the energy holding capacity or specific energy is more. What is the specific energy definition for the specific energy? Is comparison with respect to the energy upon kilogram. Let's say okay. one kg of lead acid and one kg of uh, lithium ion. Who would store more energy or who would store more charge? Is lithium ion. That's why lithium ion is used 
in the automobile because light weight with the same energy capacity okay okay and for that you can say a safety factor you are maintaining and here also i did the same thing 744 is your actual requirement is your load requirement right mm. multiplying with the this factor is uh, serving for your charging discharging factor and 1.3 is serving for your safety factor the 30% questioning it is standard it's the design standard okay. you can vary this with your own uh, situations and the scenario of the designing part okay. but mostly these two are uh, very fair in the practice okay. 1.2 1.3 okay okay now multiply this the figure will be 1160 i would say 1161 because the point for 64 is also there right mm. if you wanted to look at the formula it's a required energy into charging discharging factor and your safety factor okay mm. so this is for so one day this is for your one day now mm. they are also asked for one day backup into two so either you can multiply into two or i just sum up Hmm. Uh, either ways it, it works right basically for the 744 kilowatt partial load we need the battery capacity of 1161 correct to serve this load i need this much of my battery bank approximately how much per uh, percentage uh, you do the calculation part yeah. 744 upon 1161 it's again 80% about to 80% yes yes right yes how much it exactly Ah, 64, right? Yes. Why? Here two things are there. Your safety, because thirty percent you are not drawing out any time. Hmm. And thirty percent is your loss. Hmm. When charging and discharging. Hmm. That's why. So. Okay. So if you. observe you are losing your energy how much you are losing 30% with respect to this 1.2 is charging discharging that is your loss but mm -hmm. ultimately with this this is stored in your battery itself but you are not using yes sir is there any thumb rule fixed for bss capacity uh this so thumb rule you can treat this as a thumb rule but uh here this uh, may be vary based okay. on the application based on the battery chemistry okay. but roughly you can use this roughly you can use this approximately 60 to 70% percent. yes roughly you can use this okay right if you wanted to uh, let's say a uh, storage of 100 units 100 okay. units for required outcome right then you can put the battery pack of let's say a capacity of uh, 130 or 140 kwh then you can easily draw out the 100 units from that mm -hmm. that would be the thumb rule okay 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 so maintaining your one day backup it is 2322 it's your battery capacity yes right understood this part yes yes how off grid and on grid load going to operate with this correct yes now moving towards next 
Now we have one more point analysis of existing demand and future demands of future requirements, right? What is that actually? So existing demands is the demand at present actually, right? And connected to electrical network as a load. This is called existing demand. Whichever is connected to the, your electrical system, hmm. that is you called as a existing demand, right? And the hmm. future demands, which will be coming in your near future for uh, in connection with your electrical load, right? Yes, yes. That you that you called a future demand. Future demand. So to understand more uh, visibly uh, for this point, we'll take the uh, below example. Okay. okay. If you analyze the last example about the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. To the extension of the that example as well, the total existing load is sixty-two kilowatt. Correct. Hmm. Yes. In the last example, total load was 62 kilowatt. 62 kilowatt. And there might be there might be future upcoming loads requirements like increasing OPD sections mm -hmm. or general wards ETC. This futuristic load called as your future demand, right? The mm -hmm. hospital authority may ask for the electrical consultant that these are the my uh, future uh, demand would be, right? Mm -hmm. So with that perspective, the electrical consultant should work upon the design and then uh, they need to prepare the same. 10 kilowatt for OPD, then 20 kilowatt for this. Right. So, additional 30. so uh, I just rolled out the example here. So problem mm -hmm. and what it comes considering the previous example, if there will be expansions of the hospital services and load is added in near future as below two numbers of opd is added and five numbers of general wards are going to add hmm. will add this as same load as the previous five kilowatt and four kilowatt simultaneously for the each right yes. so what would be the best specification to run the hospital with two day battery backup okay Cons consider partial load will be powered by battery energy storage system. Okay. Then okay. We have to do. So we have previous power. How much it is? It's a 62. 62. How yeah. much we need to add? 30. It's adding two numbers of OPD and five numbers of general wards. It will additional power 2 into 5 plus 5 into 4. It goes to 20, 10 plus 20, 30. Right? Yes. Now the total new power requirement is 92 62 plus 30, right? Now okay. we'll estimate the energy part as well. The energy required with the full load. Lastly, we calculated it's 1488 full load, right? Yes. And additional energy required with the new load. It's 30 kilowatt is new and 24 hour. It's a 720. Yes. Summing up these two. Total energy requirement would be 1488 plus 720. Mm, yes. 220 kWh. Correct? Yes. Now. This is for one day. Let's say for 25. Uh, these things for one day, right? We yes. were uh, estimated these things for one day as well. So for 25 days energy requirement, it is again In the 55,200 units as 2208 into 25, right? Hmm. For a month, it requires 55,200 units for energy to operate the hospital. So every day energy requirement when it operates on full load is 2208 kWh. So daily requirement when it operates with the partial load. Divided by two. Divided by two or multiplied by 0.5. Yes. So it's 1104 kWh, right? Yes. Now, hence the battery capacity for one day energy requirement would be it's 1104 into 1 1.2 into 1.3. It yes. goes to 1722.24. So I would say 1723 kWh. Yes. Correct? Yes. 
and he asked for two days battery battery backup then into two yes so here then into two is only for the backup then you need to add one more because it's operating right two mm. days is the backup and one is operating so it's a three days actually that's why i marked here he asked that what would be the bss capacity to run the hospital with for two days battery backup okay right so yes. two days is the backup plan yes yes let's say next two days it blackout so that's why it comes to two plus one one is operating two is the backup so 17 23 into two plus one that is three so it comes to five one six nine yes right yes so this is what our battery capacity understood here the peak power is 92 with the partial load overall peak power it would be for the battery the peak power is 46 because we are operating the partial load partial load correct but in general the peak power is 92 on the grid yes now if you look at this uh, we are generally defining the batteries with respect to uh, voltage and ampere hour correct ah yes that uh, how to estimate that part we'll see into the next topic and then uh, with that detailing but in a uh, very just initial point of view you can just do the calculation power equal to v into i right because it's a battery and it's a dc yes correct so v into i then power equal to 46 into 1000 equal to i consider it's a 240 volt because uh, i want to operate my existing ac outcomes right mm. so that's why right. 240 into i so i is nothing but my full load current mm. if right so 46 into 1000 divided by 240 it comes to 191.667 mm. right hence the partial peak power is 46 at 240 voltage and the peak current would be 191.667 okay correct yes so these are my outcomes yes correct okay. understood yes all right can i move to the next then yes 